Tonight we are going to do the first light of my Celestron C6 telescope combined with the Hyperstar lens here that makes this setup into a 300mm f2 telescope which is insanely fast. Let's see how well that works. Hey guys, Quiff the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to my balcony. We are today with my Celestron C6 the Hyperstar lens. I also have a focus motor attached at the bottom here. It's a Celestron focus motor. So here's the focus mo motor. And I originally wanted to use my Windows PC with Nina uh, and attach it to the bottom here, but I couldn't get my PC to recognize my Wi-Fi anymore. I don't know what's happening. It got me annoyed. So instead of using, I'm using my Raspberry Pi with uh, Stellar Mates installed on it. So I actually already used this telescope during a cloudy night um, yesterday evening and there were some gaps in the sky so I used that time to uh, basically configure my autofocus with the uh, Celestron focus motor here. At the same time I could see that my Hyperstar the collimation was almost spot on and what I did is I made it uh, spot on and um, I always heard horror stories about how to collimate in a Hyperstar and for me it wasn't a big issue maybe it's because it's the C6 so first you saw probably in my previous video that uh, the secondary was perfectly centered basically compared to the primary but also um, at the same time, the camera is taking like, in terms of the diameter, basically half of the uh, aperture. So I don't need to do uh, any masking or anything to make uh, miscollimations very obvious. And uh, to me, it was just like collimating a normal Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, just like uh, put my finger towards a screw, see where the shadow on the collimation donut is, or on the out of focus star donut is. Um, play with the screw there here see how it changes and that was it now my star shapes are not perfect they're never going to be perfect with hyperstar uh, but they're good enough for me and so i did that yesterday what i also did is get a lens hood and this is the uh, celestron flexible lens hood it's not the best thing in the world but the last time that i bought a lens hood um, for my Celestron C9.25, so from Celestron, the inside of it was this very shiny plastic that we see here, which is horrible because it's gonna reflect light all over the place. But this time around, uh, you can see it looks really dark on the camera. There's actually some like uh, felt almost or, or whatever it is uh, that really stops light reflections, which is great. I can simply slide it on. And with that, it's gonna be very easy for me to take flats and to also take like dark frames because I can actually like kind of put a cover here and then if I cover my whole telescope and it's at night time I have perfect darkness. Now I did something else as well. If you look at my camera here you may be able to see that I actually have some black tape around my um, DC input around also my USB 3 um, input and here as well. This is because there is a very bright red LED on ZW cameras and that is a problem it radiates light um, like from within the camera body and if you're going to try to take a dark frame or even a flat frame with that LED on it's gonna be a big issue and I experienced that issue yesterday so yeah something to keep in mind it's it, it would be nice if we could actually turn off that LED um, directly but apparently it's not possible uh, so you have to actually uh, uh, wrap it in something so with that setup, we have the uh, hood, we have the camera inside, we have a focus motor that will be able to perform autofocus thanks to the uh, StellarMate um, Raspberry Pi based OS here. And we also have uh, two more things. We have the uh, guide scope here that I just inserted. It is the QHY mini guide scope and it just fit perfectly instead of the Celestron uh, viewfinder. So that's great. And all of this is riding on my EQ6R mount. And with that, I should be ready to image. But before I image, actually, I, I am going to take a few flat frames so that I'm ready to, um, to actually calibrate my um, light frames in the end. So to take my flats very simply, I'll just plop a flat panel here that's emitting a bit of light onto the lens hood and uh, here we are. So then I can just use the uh, smartphone application that is provided by um, StellarMate to just like take my exposures. And the cool thing 
And one of the cool things about this application is that it also has an, a histogram. So I can um, target a specific exposure for my flats. And I've decided that I want to take two second long flats. And um, so I'll be uh, looking for a mean and a median of my frames of around like 25,000 out of 64,000 ADUs um, available for the camera. And so I can play with the intensity emitted by this uh, light panel here to just take the right uh, flat frames. And I've now created a sequence, uh, which you can see here, which, which is gonna take 25 uh, flat frames at my two second exposure time at the temperature of minus 10 degrees, which is what I'll be using for my exposures um, this autumn slash winter here in Tokyo. Now that my flats are taken, I'm gonna choose my target for the evening, which is going to be M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. It's a whole galaxy out there with millions of stars in there, and we're gonna to try to capture that. So I am capturing at a very fast speed of F2. The last time I took uh, pictures of the Triangulum Galaxy was with a refracting telescope at F4.5, which is pretty fast already, but F2 is five times faster, roughly. And last time I, I used that f4.5 telescope, I took around 17 hours of data. If I manage to get just like 5 hours of data tonight, it will be equivalent to 25 hours of data in my, ex, in my previous setup. I, I can't say I'm... <laughs> I cannot speak anymore. I am so excited about that. So anyway, I'm going to use the StellarMate smartphone application to slew to M33, to center M33, to do a first run of autofocus to make sure that everything is working correctly. And then I'll be starting the imaging session. Okay, we are ready, we're pointed to M33, everything worked perfectly, it auto-centered without issue, it auto-focused without issue, and before I start the guiding and the actual capturing, I have to step off the balcony, because this balcony is a huge slab of wood, and just by me walking around, it's enough to completely throw everything out of whack. This is how precise we need to be in astrophotography. So I'll go inside, I'll I, l I will launch the session and I will see you tomorrow with the results. And here we are the following day. So of course the imaging night was cut short by clouds, but I was still able to get two and a half hours of data, which is quite impressive when you consider that this is the first light of this telescope, this is the first light for a focuser, and it's also the first light for a control system. I've used the StellarMate control system for um, live stacking before, but it's the first time I use it for proper astrophotography. And there were issues along the way, especially with autofocus. I had to fight with that quite a bit, but I got it right in the end, and we did get two and a half hours of data as I was saying, and I already processed the data. It's not the best result ever. And yeah, the star shapes are not great as I was expecting from such a setup that puts the camera uh, in front of the actual imaging lens. But overall, from a wide zone here in Tokyo with so much light pollution, with a very tricky subject, the Triangulum Galaxy M33, actually like has very faint nebulosity around it that blends into the background and that is like the most difficult type of target you can image from wide zones from Tokyo because the signal to noise ratio that you can accumulate in those nebulos nebulosity areas is very very hard to get especially when you're shooting in broadband like I need to for a galaxy and um, yeah I was using just a luminance filter for that particular image but overall, I am absolutely amazed by what I got with just two and a half hours of data. And this is because this telescope is an F2 telescope. F2, really, really fast. It really gobbles up photons and it is small and light. So I can actually carry it around fairly easily, which is not quite the case with um, a telescope like the Raza 8. So I really like what I have here. And I think this will in the end replace my Sharpstar F4.5 telescope, which which does get, give me better star shapes, but is five times slower. And I really think that the combo of this Celestron C6, the Hyperstar 4C6 version 4, and a camera like the ESI 533MC Pro 
is a great match. It gives you a low cost, super fast imaging telescope and it is light enough that can, you can put it on some smaller mount. So for now I have it on the EQ6R, but once I get it to completely replace my Sharpstar telescope, I will put it on my smaller AZ EQ5. But that's pretty much all that I wanted to talk about today. I'll leave you with a montage of the processing uh, of the image and of course the end result afterwards. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and you like astronomy, astrophotography, feel free to go down below, click that subscribe button, the bell icon, leave a comment, leave a like or dislike to the video. It tells YouTube that you know this video might be interesting to recommend to other people and it's really helping the channel out. So thank you so much for your help. And with that, as always, whenever you can, don't forget to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.